CBEG is a renewable gas company. Uh, uh, renewable gases enabling low carbon fuels. Uh, forward looking statement. So, why would you consider investing into CBEC and why is it a good investment today? Um, we are accelerating our revenue uh, with our guidance we have given for 2019. Our compound annual uh, growth rate is about 75% over the last three years. Uh, our backlog has significantly increased from last year to this year. We had some significant wins in Europe and also in North America. And uh, the market niche that we are targeting has expanded from virtually a couple of hundred million dollars worldwide to over six billion dollars today. So why are renewable gases such an important uh, uh, topic today? Uh, and I realized that most investors have never heard of renewable gases before or their importance as a low carbon fuel. Uh, it's all linked to climate change and global warming. As we move forward, governments are putting actions in place to uh, reduce carbon emissions. And uh, one of the steps they are taking basically is trying to uh, lower the carbon intensity of fuels. And that drives the application of renewable gases. So when we talk about renewable gases, we talk in particular about three different gases. Renewable natural gas, renewable hydrogen, and synthetic methane. All of those gases are basically zero or uh, uh, low carbon uh, fuels. Here you see a chart uh, of all the different transportation fuels and their carbon content by kilometer driven. And as you can see, uh, 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 renewable gases are clearly the way to go uh, into the future for transportation. And if you look at the, uh, at the bottom part where you see biofuels, you see that the renewable natural gas is qualified as a biofuel, whereas renewable hydrogen and synthetic methane plays on the electric side because they are tied to either fuel cells or energy storage for electricity, which plays a role in electric mobility. So I think CBEC plays in all three of those uh, renewable gas fields, and I think the company is very well positioned uh, going forward. So uh, renewable gas is basically derived out of organic material. Uh, organic material, as we all know, uh, grows through the absorption of carbon in the photosynthesis process, and the, during the growth process, it absorbs carbon out of the atmosphere. When uh, the organic material decomposes, this carbon is released back to the atmosphere. In other words, it's a, the biogenic cycle, it's carbon neutral. In some instances, like when you have dairy manure, it's actually carbon negative because you have uh, methane emissions reductions as well. So how the process works is you take the waste, you introduce it in an anaerobic digester. There are microbes in there, they decompose the organic material. We do the upgrading and at the end of it, you basically get a renewable low carbon fuel that can be injected into a pipeline or you can have renewable hydrogen that can be used in fuel cells or synthetic methane that can be stored in a pipeline system. So here you see what we call our Sim City. Um, you have the different sources for uh, renewable gas and you have the different applications. So it can go like in, in Italy now, we are involved in bio LNG. So out of uh, farm waste, we are producing bio LNG that is distributed to different industries. You can have it for heating. In, in households, if it's used in a, in a digester, uh, uh, in a pipeline system, you can use it for renewable hydrogen production, or you can use it as a compressed natural gas, as a low carbon fuel, like they do in California. 
So why, why is Seabag as a company gaining traction compared to its competitors? I think it's our overall value proposition. We have the lowest operating costs in the industry. We have a, a very high uptime and we have excellent recovery rates. Uh, we've invested over $60 million in the development of our technology and obviously that is playing a, a significant role in where we are positioned today. And we have a significant number of uh, installations worldwide. Uh, the market is starting to recognize that it's not only CapEx that is important when they buy a system, it's also reliability, availability, uh, and recovery rates. And this, this recognition is now being basically demonstrated by the orders we are winning. We won a significant order in Italy. We just announced, I think, um, uh, a little while back, a $6 million win in France. Uh, we won a project in, in Brazil. Uh, we also won the, the, the project here with the city of Toronto and Ambridge. And we, we are starting to work on the landfills in, in the US with one of our partners there. So our business model is basically uh, three segments at the moment. We do equipment sales. Uh, we build, own, and operate those facilities. So this is something we are starting to do, which means recurring revenue where we own the asset. And we basically have a service division that was our industrial segment division that is now also helping us to service and support of those clean tech facilities. It's also a recurring revenue business. So when we look at it going forward at the moment, uh, out of our, let's say, projected $40 million in revenue uh, in 2019, about $12 million will come from the service and support uh, segment, of which about 70% is recurring, and the rest basically is equipment sales. The build, own, and operate, we hope to have one or two uh, uh, build, own, operate facilities uh, this year. Here you see one of our uh, installations uh, which we are selling, where we are selling the equipment. Uh, an installation like this is probably about three, four million dollars. Uh, here you see a complete installation of a renewable energy facility. This is about a 15 million dollar installation. You see our, our equipment in the foreground, uh, in the shed there or in the, in the building. The, the, the waste is being processed, goes into an anaerobic digester, produces the biogas, we upgrade it and inject it into the pipeline. That project is in France. Um, and obviously our industrial product segment and the service and support is very important. Every customer that buys a multi-million dollar piece of equipment wants to be assured he has service and support. As a consequence, we just announced that we bought a service company here in, in Ontario uh, about uh, three weeks ago. We are now looking to buy a service company in British Columbia and then in California because those are markets that are also very active. So market size is now significant. We are looking at a couple of key markets, primarily France, Italy, the United States and Canada. In those uh, four markets, basically, uh, we count the individual applications for renewable gas facilities that have been announced. We get to about a $6 billion market size, which is now significant. So overall, we are talking about 1,700 projects, and that's on the conservative side. Uh, clearly, it's driven by government regulation to reduce the CO2 emissions. There's no doubt about that. And uh, renewable natural gas today sells at about three to 20 times the natural gas price. So natural gas trades for about $3.50 a million BTU. In California, you get today $75 for a million BTU for renewable natural gas. Obviously, uh, the main component is the carbon credits that are associated with the low carbon gas. So there's also a more broader market validation where you see that uh, governments or state governments uh, are starting to invest. Uh, California has announced the $319 million program. SNAM, which is the Italian pipeline operator, has announced an $850 million investment. 
uh, Engie, the, the French uh, energy company, which is Gas de France uh, previously, has announced an 800 million euro program. Uh, the EU has a $500 million pot of money and uh, Italy has received 4.7 billion euros for uh, biofuels and renewable natural gas. So you can see uh, both in Europe and North America, there's a significant traction. Here in Canada, we are a little bit behind, but we have two provinces that have a low carbon fuel standard, British Columbia and Quebec. And Canada, the federal government is introducing uh, this spring the Canadian Clean Fuel Standard that will uh, uh, require gas utilities to have a 5% content of renewable natural gas in the pipeline by 2025, driving significant investment into this field uh, at, at least uh, over the next decade. So where is CBIC positioned in the competitive landscape to just give you a bit of an idea? Uh, and when we are talking about uh, a renewable gas project, CAPEX is one thing. When you do a 20-year life cycle cost analysis, the most important thing that you will realize on your spreadsheet is reliability and low operating cost. And CBEC, out of all the competitors that we monitor, is clearly positioned uh, as uh, 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 one of the best companies out there. And I think that is also leading to the market validation we are seeing. So on the financial side, uh, obviously we are growing rapidly. Last quarter we grew about 100% in revenue. Uh, our productivity number, which I always point out, is about 370,000 per employee. Uh, we want to increase that towards 500,000 as we move forward. Uh, we generated uh, positive cash flow. Um, uh, EBITDA was about 1.1 million. Um, so so uh, the company is improving as we are scaling up. The big challenge is now organizational development because we are growing so quickly. That's something we are really focused on. So for 2019, uh, we laid some important uh, uh, steps in 2018. We got a $23 million credit facility from EDC. Uh, in November or late October, we closed a $7 million equity raise that helped our balance sheet. Um, uh, we we di did our first acquisition on the uh, service side to support those companies. And we are projecting now that our earnings this year will be about five to seven cent and that our revenue will increase from about 25, 27 million to 40 million plus this year. So some significant growth, obviously also some challenges in particular, trying to uh, grow the organization uh, that rapidly. So investment summary, one more time, we have a 75% compound annual growth rate. Uh, our earnings gonna grow 500% uh, this year. Uh, given uh, our, um, our earnings, the forward PE is about 11. If you look at the TSX, uh, currently at the end of last year, it was about 18. Currently, it's about 25. So I think there's some room for us uh, to move our share price when you look at it. So here are some of uh, capital market profile. Uh, we have about 55 million shares outstanding, fully diluted 69. Uh, insiders own about 17%, institutions about 30 Our market cap is now, I believe, around uh, $43, $45 million. Uh, board, I don't want to go over. You can, I can look at that uh, separately on our website. But we are building a stronger management team, obviously. I think we have a very credible board. And that is it. Thank you very much.